subscribe to the Danny Houston Podcast, man. It's Rob Wright. Today I'm rocking with Donnie Houston Show. Yeah, man, it's going down. It's Donnie Houston Podcast. I am Donnie Houston. Check it out, man. Uh, we got a special guest, man. I'm talking about we talking about legends, man. We're talking about people that really played a part in building this city and making it what it is and still actively doing it. Listen, man, the man is one of the greatest businessmen, you know what I mean? When you talk about nightlife, the man has been doing it 20 plus years. Even right now to this day, we're talking about Prospect Park. We're talking about the war. We're talking about the biggest, probably the biggest Sunday fun day in Houston, Chapman and Kirby. We're talking about, I mean, it's so much. I know I'm missing stuff. I got a whole <laughs> thing of notes, man. Listen, <laughs> Rob Wright, what's going on, man? Hey, thank you for having me, brother. How, How you doing? How you doing, man? Good, great. I, I miss some stuff, so let's just run it, man. The only one you miss is Rock House. Rock House. Most important. The most important. <laughs> Say, man, listen. All good. How you doing, man? Doing great. Doing great. Man, it's good to have you, man. You know, um, Get some time off, man. You know what I'm saying? I know you busy. I always yeah, got I was in the going. neighborhood. But I stopped by for a minute. <laughs> for sure, for sure. So, man, what's new, man? Uh, like I said, man, just trying to keep the light. I always tell people, I like just trying to keep the lights on, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got a newest concept, Rock House, just opened, uh, come up on our uh, sec month two. Mm-hmm. So, we're just going through a little growing pains of getting up in the air and getting to, you know, nice cruising altitude. So, can you talk about Rock Because I didn't, because I, I, since I didn't mention, can we talk mm-hmm. in depth about Rock House and what that is? You know what I'm saying? What the, what the idea for that is? Yeah, Rock House is a, a hybrid uh, live music, southern kitchen type vibe. Um, I think we've, you know, we cornered that market in terms of, you know, parties. And we really wanted to create something, as you would call it, age appropriate. Mm-hmm. Something, for, you know, for people who, you know, not necessarily want to mm-hmm. just hear, you know, turn up all night. They want to, you know, come get a quick bite casually eat hear a live band but still hear some of their favorite djs mm-hmm. you know in a nice spacious nice comfortable space they can still smoke their hookah still enjoy patio life uh kind of relaxed dress code you know it's just a cool easy vibe yeah, for sure for sure well man you've been doing it so long man i know you from clubs but tell me mm-hmm. where you started with this thing before you got into clubs what were you doing <laughs> i mean the funniest story man got me in this whole business with my fraternity the alphas man we were doing frat parties man back in the 80s when i graduated from college I just still had that party bug in me. So after I was, are you, are you from Houston originally? Originally from uh, Detroit, but I've been here since high school. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but yeah, I graduated. Uh, still was, you know, run around with the bros and stuff, but still had that 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 party mindset. So we just started doing like just holiday events, you know, coming home for the holidays, Christmas parties, New Year's Eve parties, Fourth of July events and stuff. And then from there, just kind of took off to being actual club promoter. So I had to wear the hat of corporate America, working for State Farm Insurance, and at night, you know, we were doing you know clubs and stuff downtown, Club Glow, Sky Bar, you mm-hmm. name it. We were doing it. Okay, so what years when you when you when you start to wear two hats? Uh, I graduated from college in '92, so right oh, after so like, like that, at that point. Yeah, yeah, probably '93 all the way up to right around 2000. No two, shit. Actually, I'm lying. 2000, probably 2009. Yeah. When did you start seeing like I might be able to do this party thing full time? Uh, right, a good question. Probably right around 2011, and that's when we opened up Sugar Hill Lounge over in Third Ward. Wait, at that time, even before, because you was in, you were synonymous with the downtown scene. Yeah, I mean, yeah, when it was yeah. going down, down. Yeah, like, we were rolling. Then, like you I said, said, that whole 2000 to right around 2011 was that whole part that club scene downtown. Super Bowl came through. Mm-hmm. All Star came through in 2006, and then you know after that came and went. 2011 was the point like okay i'm throwing parties and that's cool but we need to have ownership we need to have our name on the lease we need to be on the other side of the ball you know a lot of times when you're a party promoter your only your only, your only control is what that club owner allows you to do so once that club owner decides hey look i want to go a different direction i want to go i want to start a latin night i want to start a, a asian night he, you know you may be out on your butt and you have to be able to have control, you know, over your destiny. Hmm. What are some of the things? Because I, I don't want to skip to, to Sugar Hill. Sure. Because, sure. I mean, you're talking about prime years, bro. We, we skipped some prime party years. You know uh-huh. what I'm saying? Tell me some of your highlights from those times, like some of the things that really kept you in it and kept you excited about doing this. Uh, probably, like I said, in 2004, Super Bowl. That was probably the first Super Bowl that Houston really experienced, man. We, me and Steve, we locked into an uh, agreement with a BT. And we did a BT Super Bowl party, five thousand people. I was at that party. So it was. I was it was, it was yes. a complete shit show. <laughs> I remember that. We still laugh about this day. I remember day. seeing this shit. 5,000 yeah. people. You got people trying to get in the door. I think we had like, man, this is an sh- old shopping mall on Post It was Oak. a big-ass spot. So, I don't remember yeah, anything. I just a, remember this party being shopping huge. Shopping mall. 
And we had the audacity to have 10 security guards <laughs> in probably a 50,000 square foot. <laughs> People were coming in through all the entrances, man. It, it was crazy, but it was a learning experience. It was fun. Uh, but to this day, you know, we, we can look back at it now and laugh and be like, hey, you know, lesson learned. Hmm. And, you know, you move on and you had all-star. And, then, you know, like I said, our, our weeklies, you know, Club Glow was, was a hell of a staple. You know, weekly Saturday night downtown. Skybar on Fridays was bananas. We had a nice five, six-year run there. Then we had the Skybar on Sundays. A lot of people forgot we used to do a Sunday fun day at the Skybar for a number of years, you know. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we had a good run different uh, monthly, you know. What, what would you say was attributing? Because, I mean, y'all was running it. What would you say was attributing to y'all having that success? For, um, any, for any promoters that may be looking and watching this and wondering, like, how do you do this? Trying to really creating a consistent product. You know, I told even to this day, this is what still I think has us, you know, where we want to be consistent. You know, your your brand, your name, when people think about, okay, where do I want to spend my money at on Friday or Saturday night is based on, okay, is this person going to deliver the promise? Is this person going to deliver a solid event where everybody's dressed a certain way, acts a certain way? Is the music going to be a certain way? Is it a nice, posh environment where I, oh, this is sexy stuff? I'm not just going some hole in the wall and you never know who's gonna, who I'm going to be standing next to. So I think people who invest in us, who have invested us over the last 25 30 years invest in our brand and what, what we are presenting to them and that's you know just a top quality product again that just comes from you know honestly upbringing you know mm. steve's parents my parents raise us you know to you know do our best present the best be the best uh corporate america you know work with state farm fortune 100 company 15 years you know you learn to be on time mm -hmm. you know you learn to dot your i's and cross your t's you, you mentioned another heavyweight steve rogers mm -hmm. when you talk about how did y'all end up connecting or, or was this another young hunter that's real easy yeah, that was the funniest story of all because in 2004 super bowl was approaching Steve was doing his thing. I was kind of doing my Wait, thing. Wait, that's when y'all came together? That's the first time, yeah. Because yeah. I always, like, when I think about 2004 or 2005, Houston is Rob Wright, Lisa Rogers, mm -hmm. Steve Rogers. Yeah. So Steve was, him and Steve, Steve and Lisa were doing their thing. But uh, it knew we knew that with Super Bowl approaching and no one had actually, you know, entered those waters before, we were going to need a team, a very strong team in order to do it. And... Uh, we came together for Super Bowl and realized we we both had the same business acumen, had the same you know attention to detail, um, and that's what propelled us. That's what helped us. And then hey, we say, hey man, let's let's keep it going. It's been rolling ever since. Sugar Hill. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So talk about that, man. Because I mean, that was, Sugar Hill was like a nice. It was in the hood, but it was some mm -hmm. nice shit. It was kind of mm -hmm. like. You know, it was a hybrid almost, you know what I mean? It was. I don't know. We, I think we made a little bit before our time. I don't know if everybody was, was happy we were there. But, you Am know. I describing it correct? No, you got it right on point. Yeah. You know, we were, you know, we had the, the built-in couches. We had the fancy leather. You know, we had, the, you know, the nice finishes. It's the stuff that, honestly, if you close your eyes and open it up, it really could theoretically been a gallery area, you know, lounge, you know. Mm -hmm. But, we, you know, we had a, a really good mentor, a really good construction company, and a uh, person who came in and helped us, you know, develop it. Um, and you know it was great, man. You know, mm -hmm. I think, and I tell people all day, if the only thing I would have done different, one of the one of the things in life in terms of business that we should have done different, we should have not been cheap asses and put a damn kitchen in there. Hmm. Had we put a kitchen in there, we probably would still be sugar hilling to this day. <laughs> so food makes that big of a difference oh in that business. God, yeah, you, you create that food environment. You know, you can definitely you know count on at least twenty percent increased you know uh, food sales, and you know people like to sit, eat, and chill, and therefore. That kind of spurned Prospect Park. I mean, our, our mantra That's was... That's what I was going to say. That yeah, I thought that was the next thing. Yeah, eat, yeah. drink, lounge, you know? And you Okay, know, talk about the acquisition, because that was Scott mm -hmm. Gertner's, which is... I mean, right. it was a thing at the time, and then y'all came, took it over, and took right. that shit even to another level, you know? Yeah, my partners, uh, Junior and Jonathan, they uh, initially got the lease on it, and they were getting the ball rolling. Uh, they brought us in, and you know, the rest is history since then. The four of us uh, came in, got that, got that ball rolling. Uh, good mesh of... of a younger, you know, the kind of younger guys who had a nice, strong hole in that younger 25 to 35 community. Me and Steve had that good 35 to 50 strong hole. So, yeah, it was a good marriage, and Prospect Park is going on year 10 right now. So. And y'all got two locations? Two, well, just closed just, one. Just the one on the north side, we uh, just recently closed. It just uh, just wasn't making good business sense to stay open, but we had, we had a good eight-year run there. So. Mm -hmm. Is what, what is it, is. it about Prospect Park? Because, again, it's one of these places, man. Like, people just, they love it, man. One of those lightning in the bottle situations. And at the time when we opened, and we were just talking about this yesterday, you know, when Prospect Park opened, there wasn't a bunch of wannabe or elevated sports bars, mm -hmm. you know. There was very few. You had 
I can't think of really any other than going people going to Hooters and a couple of little sports bars like that. But you created this one that was built for our people. In the black space, yeah. Right. Yeah. Again, with the same attention to detail in terms of the, the aesthetics of the building, the, the attention to detail, how good the food was and stuff of that nature, the size of it. The previous location with it being Scott Gertman Sports Bar, that didn't hurt. Obviously, they had a built-in Wednesday night crowd, wing night, that you know people were familiar with. And that just, again, it was kind of, again, that lightning in a bottle situation. After we got open two or three years, then you start seeing a bunch of lookalikes, wannabe, hybrid <laughs> sports okay, bars. Okay, let's stay right there. How do you feel, how how you feel about that hey, when you man, see that? Because, I mean, right. like you said, if Prospect Park was the first. Hey, imitation is the purest, for us, for us. Imitation is the purest form of flattery. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody shot their But best. are you really flattered by that? Because people say that, and when I see people imitate, I'm like, <laughs> man, I ain't really flattered by that shit, man. Well, you know, it's the way you do it. You know, yeah. if you, you know, if you just go, you know, take the whole book and write the whole book and then put your name on it. It's a different conversation. Now, if you're going to read the book and then, you know, and, and make some adjustments and put your spin on it, that's one thing. But if you're going to take the whole book and just write it verbatim and then go out and just change the name, then that's a problem. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, like I said, man, it's, it is what it is. And one thing I've told people, I, you know, I just stay in my lane. I mean, I can't control who's opening what and what's happening here, what's happening there. All you control is your product and what you have you know what i mean as long as you're doing your job putting out the best product you can produce that's all and it'll t everything else takes care of itself hmm. seriously what are, what are some of the things uh are there any projects that you had that you like man this didn't really work out the way i thought it was gonna work out i would have liked this to be hmm good question um you know everything that we've had man is you know pretty much exceeded honestly that's why i asked that yeah, question because i don't kind know of you exceeded that, yeah. well i mean again the sugar hill project again like i said if we had it all over to do again we would have added a kitchen and that would have gave us i think more respect for the neighborhood because i think once we opened up sugar hill understandably the neighbors felt a certain kind of way because we brought you know crowds we brought parking we brought people in their neighborhood leaving two o'clock in the morning Dropping, making noise, not taking consideration. You got little kids upstairs sleep, trash in their yards, you know, sex in the cars, all kind of crazy shit where the neighbors would come to us the next day and be like, oh, look what you brought to our neighborhood. And, you know, inevitably they had, they put the, um, the uh, no parking uh, uh, signs throughout the neighborhood and that kind of killed our parking. Therefore, that created a lot of issues and challenges for customers coming to Sugar Hill. But had we had a nice kitchen, restaurant vibe, those neighbors would have been our customers as well. And we may or may not have gotten as much pushback as we did at that time. Hmm. Man, talk about this monster, man, on Sundays, man. This Chapman is crazy, man. <laughs> how, how did you even, you know, talk about how do you, the, the, the thought of, like, where does this come from? You know what I mean? That's another lightning in a bottle. I mean, I, I tell a few people this story. I hate to tell a lot, but I tell a few people this story. At the time, the owner called me three times. During COVID, you know, we everybody sheltered in, and he, and he was like, "Man, let's just just do a Sunday fun day," and I'm like, "No." He called me a second time. I'm like, "No, I'm not interested." I'm thinking like, "Where, you know, what's going on with COVID? What's going on with Prospect Park? What's going on with this?" I'm more concerned about honestly, you know, just COVID and not catching COVID, <laughs> you know, and this, that, and the third. And the third time, you know, I made a call, and I said, "Kurt, what do you think?" He was like, "Why not? Let's give it a shot. We nothing else to do." Like, all right, let's do it. We're never expecting what, what you know, has occurred and 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 the. It's a zoo in, the, in a good way. It's a zoo. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's been a blessing. We talk about it all the time. I know we, you know, it's we're a little cocky at times about it, but we're very proud, you know, of the product. But again, that's that same situation. You know, you try to be consistent about the service, the food, the space, the music. I mean, to me, I arguably I think we have the best DJ lineup. You know in the country in terms of consistency when they come when people come to Chapman and Kirby they're coming in there to get it in you know um, and that's you know one of the things I think that helps us a lot um, obviously during that time everybody knows Houston was that place that was open everybody was closed so you had Chicago New York DC Miami Cali you know they were coming to Houston as a, as a hot you know as that, that getaway and I think a lot of venues actually caught fire or or still are still benefiting from you know, from that, you know, Prospect Park is still benefiting from it. I'm sure Camp is. I'm, I know Chapman is. Uh, 5015 is, you know. So there are a lot of, you know, venues that are still, you know, winning from us being a tourist spot. I know a lot of locals aren't aren't that crazy about us being, 
label a tourist spot now, but I think it's honestly it's our turn. I think in terms of us always going to Miami, blowing cash, going to New York, blowing cash. Now let's let them come to our city and blow some cash. Hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So okay, we got Chapman, we got all these things. Talk about uh, we going into what was it the ward? Mm-hmm. The ward. Talk about the ward. So ward was something that it's, it's been on my mind, man. Even probably, you know, back mid two thousand. You know, I love food. I cook. So I'm not just you know an owner who just slaps my name. I'm the owner. I'm back there. And I'm back there cooking. I'm back there coming up with recipes. Oh no! Oh no! Shit! Stuff. Yeah! Yeah! Hundred percent! Yeah! So we're, I'm strategizing. You know, I'm I'm playing around with food at my house during COVID. You know, my wife should every day. I was cooking different dishes. I'm taking notes. I'm writing down you know flavor profiles and stuff of that nature. And then I took all that, passed it on to the real chef. And we sat and came up with that menu for for Warwick and for Rock House, for that matter. So that was, you know, a big deal. That was kind of like that lifelong dream. Like, look, I, this is what, you know, ultimately I want to do. You know, you can't be in the clubs forever. I mean, you have to be in a space where, you know, I'm, I'm 50. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 50 plus. You don't want to be in a space where, you know, I got folks who are coming in, you know, dressed a certain kind of way, looking kind of way. And, you know, we're the spot you go to before you go jump off and turn up or what have you. And. You know, needless to say, you know it's been a, it's been a tremendous hit. Um, it is a big it's probably well, probably most proudest uh, concept that you know honestly that I'm involved with. Right, to be honest, do with you me. have aspirations for other restaurants like that, or are you kind of yeah? So as we're talking, you know, offline, I mean, you know, the, the end game is to be able to scale these concepts, scale a concept, and take it on the road. You know, Houston's been, you know, we provided Houston. I, I feel like a pretty good, unique dining venue. And I feel like other parts of the country deserve that same vibe. I mean, and we meet people daily, our managers and our closing reports. Hey, some some big guy was here from New York. He wants to open up a Warwick here. We have people calling from D.C., L.A., different celebrities, M- 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 NFL and NBA. Have said, hey, guy, we want to open up a Warwick in our hometown. You know, so we hear it. And, you know, it's flattering. And I think, honestly, that's the next move for us to be able to take this show on the road. And, you know, I think, like I made a comment one day, I think every city should have a Warwick. Hmm. Man, that's that's good. What 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 do you say? Uh, what are the top three things you would say attribute to success in your industry? Um, this is just giving game for people watching. If they right. Out. I mean, being professional. I mean, you have to be professional. I don't care how grimy this business can be. You know, ultimately, which the professionalism. How what you say you gonna when, whatever you say you're gonna do, you got to do it. Because ultimately, when people weigh if they're gonna do business with you or if they're gonna give you that loan. Or if they're gonna, you know, bring their artists through, or whatever it is, if you're, if you do what you say you're gonna do, then your name is gonna come to the top of their mind when they're considering all those different factors. So I mean, you have to be professional, you know, do what you do what you say you're gonna do. Uh, you have to be consistent. You cannot be inconsistent. You can't be inconsistent in sports. You can't be inconsistent as a politician, as a restaurant, as a cook. If you inconsistent, you're dead. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> And number three, love what you do. Hmm. You have to fucking love what you do. If you can't, you know, a lot of times it's hard, you know, to get out of bed. You know, that's why I left corporate America. You know, I, insurance was cool, you know, but, you know, I was on national disaster team for State Farm, climbing roofs, traveling all over the country. I was making, I was making six-figure salary. It was cool. But I didn't but love you it. Like how you I had to get love the money, though. Yeah. You know, I wanted control of my destiny, you know. And ultimately, you know, when I get out to bed, you know, half the time, I only get five hours of sleep. Because the other three hours, I'm in my mind, I'm sleeping. I'm thinking about what I'm going to do when I wake up in the morning. So two and a half hours, my body, my mind's already working on what the hell's going to go on when I get up. So, but that's just love for the love for the game, love for what you do. And you get up and you go get it. Hmm. What would you say are the, the greatest uh, clubs to ever come through the city? Ooh, uh, I got to give Embar right now. I mean, people still this day yeah. will say Embar. I guess I, I have to give it to Embar. That's probably the number one. Again, consistency. Steve, Lisa, and Russ, they were consistent about it. Um, and that's, there's no secret about it. Mm. Okay. Uh, we're talking about DJs. Top five DJs in the city. Greatest, oh. greatest DJs you've ever seen come through this city. Damn. It, it, it don't have to be like one, two, three, four, five. Nah, just nah, name nah, five nah, DJs, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, you ain't got to rank them. You ain't got to rank them. Well, shit, if that's the case, I'm going to gonna be the... My boys that are currently at, you know, Ch- Chapman. I mean, I got to give Mr. Rogers, GT, JQ, um, shit, Rob G, I love to death. Um, Q Holic when he ain't drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Q Holic, man. <laughs> That's tough. <laughs> In Houston. <laughs> Houston DJ. All right, cool. 
Yeah, already, man. Right. man. You got anything else, man, before we, uh, before we close out, man? Oh, no, man, I appreciate you having me, man. I hope, you know, whatever I... I said, may I resonate some, some one thing may I resonate with somebody. I know there's a lot of young entrepreneurs, a lot of folks coming up in Houston that want to, you know, want a, a gem, a jewel, a piece, just an idea of what, you know, what it takes. Hopefully, you know, something that we talked about, you know, may light a, may, may light a fire into somebody and hopefully, you know, they can, you know, do what they want to do too. You For know? sure, well, man. Yeah. I, I appreciate you coming. No doubt, you know what brother. I'm saying? Uh, no doubt. No I appreciate doubt. it. We, I booked you, we booked me a couple times. I'm trying to get on Rob list, man. You know what I'm saying? Hey. So hopefully somebody, some, next time somebody asks Miss Rock Rob, Rockhouse Saturday there. Brunch, Donnie Houston, coming soon. You heard it first. We finna get my man over here for Saturday Brunch at Rockhouse. So stay tuned. Give me about a week. Yeah, it is, man. <laughs> hey, man, Rob, right? All right. Donnie man. Houston, Donnie Houston Podcast. We'll party out. Let's go. All right. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Subscribe to Donnie Houston Podcast, man.